you here with us to worship the Lord. I'm glad that I come to the house of the Lord. There's no greater place besides heaven than I'd rather be than in the house of the Lord. God's been so good to us. He's blessed us. He's touched our lives. He's ministered our hearts. I'm just so thankful to be a part of Norwood Church of God this morning. I appreciate all those ones tuning in, those that aren't tuning in live stream, those that aren't watching, and those that aren't here. Shame on you. Uh, praise the Lord. We, uh, we're going to have church. Hallelujah. No matter if we've got a thousand and one people or we got one person. As long as we got Jesus, right, we're going to have church. Hallelujah. We've got King Jesus with us this morning. Just looking for God to move and God to have his way. Go well, open up in prayer. Just welcome the presence of the Lord. Ask him to have his way and minister in every life, every heart, every home today. And just uh, just bless each and every one. You praise him. You just call upon Heavenly Father. We truly thank you for allowing us to be in your house to serve you, to honor you, to magnify your holy name. God, you've been so good to us. Never thank you enough, never praise you enough. God, we, we, we just love you this morning. Lord, we ask you to settle over this place with your holiness power and your anointing. Shine forth in our lives. Move and minister in our hearts and souls. Lord, reach down and let your will be done. Lord, let your work perform uh, in our church, Lord, in our lives today, God. Lord, hey, hey, hallelujah, we're here to worship you. This is about you. <coughs> settle over us, Lord, that we can be your people, Lord God. No matter, uh, no matter who's here or not here, you're here. The presence of the Lord is here. We're going to reach out and we're going to worship you today, God. I just ask you to help joy to spring up in every soul this morning. Lord, let your joy be unspeakable and full of glory this morning in our lives. That we can be your people and do your will. God, I ask you to have your way today in the midst of the service. Settle over the worship time that we can praise you. In Jesus' holy, wonderful name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. If you'll stand with us, page 199. 199, you're here.
praise report this morning. We're going to hear a testimony. <laughs> praise the Lord. Good morning. Um, something happened this week to me, and I just want to share it with the church. Uh, anybody in here ever been attacked by the devil? Oh, yeah. Every day. <laughs> God came through for me, though, didn't he? Amen. Oh, he comes through for me. Yes. Well, let me get to tell you something really short on trial. Um, Thursday, we had a Medicare, Medicaid audit with our North Carolina audit lady. And from 9 o'clock, I think 5.30, we were in a conference room, six of us. And my corporate lady um, decided that she was going to read me a word in front of everybody um, over something that was very minor. <laughs> and um, it got to the point where it was very tense in there. And um, all I could do was just be quiet and not say anything. You know, God tells us, be still and let God move. Yes. So I, under my breath, said, Lord, I need your help. And God turned it around. <laughs> the very thing that she was on me about in front of everybody, the auditor pointed out to her that she was wrong in front of everybody. Amen. So God showed up and God took care of me. And God will take care of you no matter what. And I'll say this, if the devil's not on you at some point, you're not living right. Because I've been trying my best for a while to live right and do right by him. And God will show up. But you need to also be close enough to him in your spirit that he will show up. Because he's a now God. He'll be up now. And I just, I just want to praise him this morning for showing up and showing out on my behalf this week. Praise the Lord. God shows up and God shows out. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We're going to take the needs of our church to the Lord in prayer. Must remember our lost loved ones that they'll be saved before it's too late. Also our children. God will bless all of our children. Bless their homes, their lives. Touch them. Our school system. God will touch the school system. Every staff member, every student, everyone involved. Lord will touch them. Also, uh, let's keep Sister Linda in prayer this morning. She needs a, uh, an urgent pr uh, prayer answer. We need God to move and mess in her life. We're going to anoint a prayer cloth this morning. We'll take tour, so uh, we're going to anoint that for Sister Linda this morning. But don't, uh, don't forget to pray for her. Also, keep Miss Brenda in prayer and Miss uh, Mary in prayer. Lord, touch them and bless them. Also, let's remember uh, Kim. Uh, she's hurt her foot. Uh, she's in a boot. Let's keep Kim in prayer. God will touch her and strengthen her and help that foot uh, to get well and uh, just minister in, in that need. Um, also, let's uh, let's keep Shirley and in prayer. Lord, touch them, bless them, be with them. Continue members of Sister Pam's family, Lord, will touch them and uh, bless them. Also, uh, uh, yeah. Will Sister Tucker's daughter, Danielle, keep her in prayer. And the new grandbaby, keep the, the, keep her in prayer, Lord, will touch. Also, uh, uh, Sister Tucker's Aunt Linda and also her friend Leslie, that family. Let's keep them in prayer, Lord, will touch. Lord, will bless. Lord, will minister in a mighty way, touching those needs. I wonder if you have a prayer request this morning yeah, to give you.
Yes, Brother Marshall. Just a wonderful, blessed day. Marvelous day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Yes. Sure, we all have needs. Lord, that's all about symbolizing what's at hand. You'll stand with us this morning. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you for the will. Stretch forth your hands as we pray. Uh, we'll pray for them. For every prayer call, then we'll pray for the church. Ask God to move in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, loving you, praise you. Thank you for all you've done. Lord, you've been so good to us. You've been a great God, loving God. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. God, we can never thank you enough. God, we ask you to reach out to touch Gage this morning. Reach out and bless him. Lord, take away those seizures. Lord, reach out and touch him in a mighty, miraculous way. Reach out and bless him. God, be with him and lead him and help him, Lord. Lord, he needs a touch. Need you to reach out and bless. Lord, I'm leaving you for a touch. Heavenly Father, reach out and touch Miss Nikki. Lord, reach out and touch her as she goes tomorrow to the doctor. God, help everything to be all right. Lord, help that spot to be going. Lord, I'm going to hang hard. Lord, reach out and touch him. Mighty way, just reach out and bless. Let your heart bear, Lord, touch it. The other one spoke of request. God, she gave in. God, I ask you just to bless her. Minister, move in a mighty way. Touch her family. Reach out and bless her. Lord, move in the ministry of that need in that situation. Lord, we come before you today. Lord, we anoint this prayer call on behalf of Miss Linda. God, we ask you to touch Miss Linda. Reach out and be with her. Lead her, guide her, help her, Lord. Reach out and strengthen her. Help her to be able to get her strength back. Lord, be able to eat. Lord, I just ask you to touch Miss Linda. Right now, reach out and touch her in a mighty way. Reach out and bless her. Be with her leader. And just do a mighty work in her life. Lord, I believe you're, you You can heal. You're the master of position. You are the somebody's trust for our heal. I believe that you can heal Miss Linda. Lord, reach out and touch her in a mighty way. Reach out and touch Miss uh, uh, reach, touch Miss Mary this morning. Reach out and touch her. Touch Brenda. Reach out and touch her in a mighty way. Lord, reach out and touch uh, Roger and Kathy Smith. Reach out and touch them. Minister to needs, Lord. Help them to feel better. Continue to move forward. Lord, reach out and bless them. Lord, reach out and touch us. Uh, Sister Angel, Sister Lord. Sister, Lord, reach out and bless them and touch them. Help them to get right with you, Lord. Bless them in a mighty way. Touch in a mighty way in every needs. Lord, continue to touch Brother Tim. Lord, you brought him a long ways. Lord, I know you're going to bring him out. Lord, I ask you to touch him and I ask you to move and minister to him. Lord, touch the man. We're going to touch her tomorrow. She goes to work. God, I ask you to bless her. Strengthen her, wrap her love and her. Help her to know everything's all right. Lord, I believe you. Lord, this one, I know you're going to do it. Everything to go all right. Touch her family. Bless her family. Minister in a mighty way. Lord, touch her and heavy. Reach out and bless them. Help them to give way. Lord, reach out and minister to him. Touch Cindy this morning. Lord, reach out and touch her. Touch Gail. Move in a mighty way. Touch her life. Touch Sherry today. Lord, reach out and touch her. Bless her, Lord, minister. And all these needs. Lord, touch her lost little ones. And every saint. Lord, it's everlasting too late. Lord, I ask you to move in their life. Lord, touch all the children and all their lives. Lord, bless them. In a mighty way. Lord, touch our school system. Everyone involved. The students, staff, workers, and everybody. Lord, just reach out and minister to them. Lord, touch all those that are here today for whatever reason. Bless them and touch them. Lord, reach down and send the people from the north, south, east, and west. Send them back in. God, move in a mighty way. Lord, bring the people, Lord. Bring them out, Lord. And Lord, just reach down. Let your will be done. Touch my brother, sister Tucker's uh, the daughter, Danielle. Reach down and touch her. Touch that new grandbaby. Lord, reach down and bless her in a mighty way. Touching that knee. Touch uh, sister Tucker's friend, Leslie, and her family. Lord, move in that knee. That situation. Lord, reach down and bless her aunt, Linda. Reach down and minister that knee. Lord, touch every need, every heart, every situation, everyone here today. We have a hand raised. Lord, you know the need more than ask. God, I ask you to move. In
some of the little just minor things we're going to do to keep everybody safe. We're going to have uh, we're going to have uh, the tables going to be spread out, which you already probably figured that out. Um, also, um, every time you go to, we're going to have gloves. Gloves. Every time you go to the uh, the bar to fix your food, put on a new set of gloves. Well, gloves are provided. You won't have to pay a dime for them. Uh, use a new pair of gloves. And anytime you're not at your table eating, please wear a mask. Um, we're going to have a large crowd in the uh, fellowship hall. A lot of people. So that's minor stuff. When you sit down eating at your at your table with your family and friends, you don't have to wear a mask. But if you're up away from your table, please wear a mask. Help everybody. Including ourselves. I don't like a mask. Let me tell you, I hate a mask. I despise a mask. Let me say that again. I despise a mask. Amen. But every day at school, I have to wear one all day long, unless I'm in my office. I don't like it. But it will help. And it will allow us, uh, in order Church of God, not to be a hot spot or called a hot spot uh, for, uh, for a virus outbreak. Then that's what I want. I want to be wise with God's mercy. Now, do I. Do I 100% believe they're 100% effective? No, I don't. But if they're any effective, it can keep any of us or anyone else from being sick. That's what I'd like to do. That's what I desire to do is just use the wisdom of God. And so, uh, like I said, um, we have a mask. Be, if you don't have your own, we have a mask that will be provided for you. Just if you're up, walk around or walk into the, uh, to get your food, just put on a new set of gloves, set of gloves, little plastic gloves, and uh, uh, wear the mask and you need to take it. Take it off. And uh, so nothing more, nothing, I told you it wasn't going to be nothing too serious. But that way we've, we've got uh, we've got everything covered as best we can. And everybody can have a good time. Everybody can be safe. Everybody can be happy, happy, happy. And everybody can eat. And uh, I sure hope somebody's bringing those chicken dumplings. So if somebody ate some chicken dumplings, so uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just messing with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Might even have somebody down there that's got to wear a Steelers hat. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, this is the best one, Brother Tim. You gotta mess with somebody. <laughs> you mess with Brother Tim. Hallelujah. Have you missed any other messages? All right. In just a moment, we're going to, uh, we're going to take an offering. Uh, in just a moment, have Brother Eddie. We'll have a lot of help uh, Eddie take an offering. Also, there's something that's uh, been on my heart for a while now. Um, and because of the COVID, we've had uh, low uh, low attendance on or lower attendance on Sunday morning. So I didn't know uh, when to uh, would be a good time or, or when not would be a good time. So uh, Lord, just give me freedom to be able to do it this morning. So even with not uh, as many as normal uh, before the COVID here, uh, I just it's been on my heart. Uh, I want to take up a love offering for someone that's associated with our church. Um, and so I want to uh, I want to give you an opportunity this morning to to give to uh, that to give to that need someone associated with our church um, that, uh, that, that that there's a need that I know about and I've been been on my heart been on my mind for a while now and I just want to uh, I just want to help them, them that person help them and so uh, if you can give this morning uh, please do that I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have Haley uh, take up that offering it's gonna be a love offering. It'll go directly to uh, someone associated with the with the church. Um, I, I don't ever discuss names. Don't ever discuss people. All I can tell you is that I always, always, always am obedient to the Lord. And when the Lord lays something on my heart, I do it. And so you can all you can always uh, if I if I take up a little offering or help for anybody, know that it's because God's laid on my heart and it's it's going for a right reason and a right purpose. And I would never ask anybody for anything that I knew was not good. But this this will definitely be a blessing. This will definitely be a help uh, to someone associated with our church. So uh, please, uh, please, uh, if you can give, please do that. Hallelujah. Like I said, Haley, Haley and Bob will come up. And Brother Eddie, Haley will have the love offering. This is the love offering. Miss Lyle will have a regular one. Brother Eddie, let's listen to one of the
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Amen. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord as Sister Rita comes to sing a special this morning for us. God will bless God will minister. Hallelujah. As I said, Brother Eddie and Miss Lila are offering. Sister, uh, Sister uh, Haley is the love of Hallelujah. God is so good. Good morning. Good morning. I am going to answer a request this morning. And uh, this is for Brother Coon back there. He has been after me for the last couple of weeks to do this song. This is his favorite one that I wrote. And I hesitate to do it when he asks because he says it always makes him cry. So if you cry today, it's your own fault because you asked for it. <laughs> But you know, it's a good thing if God gives a word that touches your heart and it, and it makes you uh, cry, it makes you laugh, it can make you shout, it can make you say amen, but that's all right. Whatever God puts in your heart, you need to do it. Amen. You know, we've been talking a lot today, and as you heard, Candace giving praise and glory to the Lord for the things that he had done in a tough time. And we can look around at all the tough times that are going on in this life today. And I think one of the worst places that you can be in is to be unsaved or to be backslidden. That's right. But I want to tell you through this song today that I hope you will listen to the words and uh, know that if you are in a backslidden state, maybe you're down and out, or maybe if you aren't, you know someone close to you who is in that state. You know, whether it be from something with COVID, whether it be with drugs or alcohol, or anything that has come along in your life to cause you to lose Jesus or lose sight of Jesus, yes. or whether you have just gone down and out, lost it all. But there is a way out. And his name is Jesus. And you know, I, I have a devotion book that I use every morning when I when I go and do my prayer time. And um, this morning, as it would happen, the devotion that was in that book this morning said something that really hit home to me. And it's something we all know, but I don't think we really think about. And you think, well, you know, I made a mistake. I'm down and out. Maybe I'm backslidden. Maybe I'm this. Maybe I'm that. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have a way. I don't have means. But God has the way. He has the means. Yes, He does. And all we have to do is call on His holy name. Because even if we have made bad choices, and who in here hasn't made bad choices? We all have. So if we make bad choices, and we think, well, this is the right way. Maybe we made it with good intentions and thinking that this was the right choice to make. And it doesn't matter if our choice is wrong because God has a way of bringing us back around to his way of thinking, back around to his word, back around to the path that he wants us to take. So he is always there. Don't worry if we make a mistake. Just give it to him. And let him correct our mistakes because that's exactly what he does. Amen. That's what he will do. But we have to trust him and we have to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. So this song is kind of different, but I, I know that this is George's favorite. So uh, this is for him today and I hope that it will touch somebody else's heart along the way. Amen. <clears throat> See, that's another sign. The devil don't want you to hear this song. <laughs> Guess what? He loses. <laughs> he loses. Well, the good life I 
is gone forever. I traded family for a world in life of sin. Now my As I sit here in this place, no one to talk to. To Jesus. Can you hurry? Come on, Mama. Scott Will he even take my call? It's been a long time since we talked. Operator, please get Jesus.
But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. He looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all of that other plain, and behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning, loving you, and praise you. Thank you one more time. Lord, I must be in your house to serve you, to honor you, to magnify your name. God, you've been so good to us. We never thank you. No, ask you, Lord, to message, to message, and Lord, our ears to hear and our hearts to receive. God, you have some for us this morning. We've got to hearken unto you. We've got to listen to your voice. We've got to listen to what you say and do your will. We love you today. We praise you. Thank you for all things. In Jesus' holy, wonderful name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 You must desire change or desire to change. We must desire change in our life. We must desire something to take place in our life. And as we look around, and I've, uh, uh, I, I, I've dealt with uh, a lot of uh, people that have been addicted to different things. And, uh, you know, uh, in my line of work, uh, as far as pastoring and law enforcement, and I, I, I've been around a lot of people that have uh, needed to be uh, carried places to get some help. And I've always told many people, and I still say it today, unless a person desires change or desires help, wants help, they will not receive the help. The help might be provided, the help might be good, and it might last a couple days. But until someone wants to change, they will not change. And let me give you an example. An alcoholic that does not want to change, you can send him to rehab all you want to. But he'll come back out and do the same thing over and over again until he wants change. Same thing with a drug addict, same thing with a prostitute, same thing with a gambler, same thing with anyone that is addicted to things of this world. Unless they want help, unless they want a change in their life, unless they want to be different, they'll always do the same things over and over and over again. God's looking for some people that desire change, some people that need change, some people that, that need to take place. You see, Abraham had already went to prayer to God. He already talked to God for a lot. Abraham had already talked and said, hey, I, I've got a relative over there. My nephew, he's over there and he needs help. Uh, please don't destroy the city. I love my nephew. I love him. And I want him to have help. And God said, I won't destroy it. And it went all the way from 50 people to 10 people. But lo and behold, there wasn't even 10 people righteous found in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now that says something. That says something very tremendous. That means that there was not even 10 righteous. That means everybody was unrighteous besides up to the ones of his of Lot's family, right? It means everybody was living unrighteous, living the way they wanted to, doing the things they wanted to do, living just like the world, being the world, acting like the world, and thinking everything was going to go by, everything was going to be smooth. Just like in many places of worship today, the preacher is doing the exact same thing, saying everything's going to be smooth. It's smooth sailing. All you got to do is just, is just go along and get along. All you got to do is just understand God, understand you. Just keep, you just keep giving your money to the church and God's just going to bless you. Let me tell you, God doesn't bless a person because of money. God bless a person because of their heart. God bless a person that reaches down in their heart and in their soul and does something different when people want that change. They want something different. As we look at this story, you see, God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but he was going to uh, bless Abraham and he was going to listen and heed to Abraham and be a miracle like that for Abraham because he was going to let Lot and his family get out. Lot and his family come out. And so I want us to look at three aspects of this story this morning. I want you to look at three simple things that, that you've got to realize as, as this was beginning to happen. The angel uh, that came into, came into Lot and was telling him, hey, God's fixing to destroy this place. You need to get your family. You need to tell them. You need to get out of here. We've all heard the story as children, as a young adults. We've all heard this story about uh, Lot and, and Lot's wife. And I'm like, we'll get to Lot's wife shortly, but I, I want you to listen. First of all, I want to talk about his sons-in-law. He was told, he said, uh, he said, he was told to go to his sons-in-law, tell them, hey, you got to get up, you got to get out, let's go, we got to leave this place. But you know what happened? The sons-in-law were settled because he, he seemed as he began to tell, you know what? The land is going to be destroyed. The land is going to be dealt with harshly and God's going to wreak havoc on this place. You need to get out. As he told his sons-in-law that they looked at him like he was one that mocked them. They thought he was being funny. They thought he was being foolish. Their sons-in-law, they, they were settled in that place. They had a settled mindset, a settled heart, uh, heart set. They had settled in themselves that, hey, we're not leaving here. We're happy doing what we're doing. We're happy living like we're living. We're happy being who we are. As he began to tell, as he uh, began to tell them, hey, you got to leave. you got to go out. As he spoke to his sons, which buried his daughters, up, get you out of this place. The Lord's going to destroy him. He seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. He, he seemed foolish. He seemed one that mocked. He seemed like he was a nut. He seemed like he was crazy. His son-in-law didn't take heed. He tried to tell him. He said, you know what? This land's going to be destroyed. God's going to destroy this. you got to get out. 
He talked to his sons in law. He was trying to help them. He loved them because they had married his daughters. He loved them and he cared about them. Lot wanted to help them. But you see, the sons in law had gotten so settled in the way they was living, they weren't going to listen to some foolish man come and tell them they got to get out. God's going to destroy it. You know, it kind of represents in today's time, don't it? A lot of people are thinking, well, that preacher's foolish when he says, every service, Jesus coming soon. Well, they, well, well you know what? That preacher's foolish if he, if, if he thinks you you got to live right or that people's going to be destroyed and, and destruction's coming. Well, well, that preacher, he ought not to preach so strong. Or, or you know what? We ought not to believe so strict or so strong because, you know, uh, God understands this and God understands that. Let me tell you something. If God will destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, if they didn't have ten righteous, do you not think he's going to destroy somewhere else and people don't straighten up and people don't start living right and doing right? That's why he tells the Chronicles, if my people are gathered together and humble themselves, that's why he talks about healing the land because there's a sickness all across this land that's going on. And it's called sin, uh, sin sickness across this world that we have a problem with around this world, around our communities, around our towns. We've got a sin sickness problem. The same thing that Sodom and Gomorrah had in the sons of law thought he was being foolish because he was trying to save their life. Every time I preach a message, every time a Sunday school teacher teaches a Sunday school class, we're trying to save lives from a devil's hell. Amen. We're trying to save lives from fire and brimstone yes. because that's exactly what's in hell, fire and brimstone. And that is a horrible place. We don't like to preach about it, don't like to talk about it, don't like to uh, uh, mention it many times. But let me tell you, we've got to talk about hell because we've got to do something to keep people from going there. We've got to do something to get people to change their mind. But people have gotten so settled in. Well, because, uh, because it was all right for mom and daddy, grandma and grandpa to do this, I'll just do it and get by with it. Let me tell you, how do you know it was right for mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa to do it? you got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling before an awesome God. How do you know? How do you know that those things went on? Oh, hallelujah. I might not meddle much this morning, but I might. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to meddle here. People got so set and doing things or doing the way they always thought it should be done or the way it's always done. Let, let me just tell you. I've talked to a lot of people since I've been a Christian, not just pastor, since I've been a Christian. And a lot of people I've worked with, a lot of people I've met that say they're a Christian, they go to church, and they'll tell me where to go to church or wherever. When's the last time you've been there? They'll, a while ago, or this or that. It's never, it's never just Wednesday or just this past Sunday. You know, it's always a time. But then you, you ask the question, why do you go there? Well, it's just where I've always went. Mom, Dad, Grandma, and Grandpa went there, and my and Grandma helped form the, the the church. Was on the was on the uh, the committee that built the new building, and and this and that. And, and and God hasn't been present in that facility in years, but they just want to sit there and, and listen to the listen to the uh, nonchalant preacher preaching just a, a happy message, and and the spirit of God doesn't move, and they're just happy. Let me tell you, unless we won't change, that's exactly how it will be. You know, it's time. somebody else does. I don't need to do something just because that one over there does. I need to do something because God tells me to do it. I need to do what God wants me to do. It's going to be a settled with the whole world and settled with this and settled with that and settled over here and settled over there. We need to settle with God. Hallelujah. And be what God wants to be. It's time that we do different than the sons and all did here. That we say, you know what? I'm not going to be settled in my condition. I'm going to let God work in my life. Hallelujah. People have been saved for years and years can get into a Choir. Amen. I also call it setting their ways. You ever met people setting their ways? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Setting their ways. Trying to show them and tell them something that is absolutely correct. But because that's all they've heard and all they've seen, that's the way they will continue to believe and continue to think. Even though it's not the right, even though it's not what's supposed to happen or how it's supposed to happen, or even though it's how God's changed, changed people's lives, they're just settled. They're, they're, quite, they're just settled in their ways, settled with the way things are going. You know, that's kind of that's kind of the way the world has gotten in today's time. 
Just settle. Just anything can go. It's all right. Well, if that one wants to do that, then it's all right. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking for a time when they make it a law that, 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 that you've got to color your hair red or you, you're going to get in trouble. You know, they're making all kinds of laws in today's time. That's facetious. Making all kinds of laws in today's time. That's just as facetious as that. That says it's okay to do this and okay to do that. When in reality, God says, you know what? You better abstain from that. You better steer clear from that. But people don't want to listen to God. People don't want to listen to Lot. People don't want to listen to God. Uh, thank God that, uh, that, that, that Lot listened a little bit. Now, we're going to get on Lot in a minute. I'm, I'm going to get on his case in a minute. Uh, Lot listened a little bit to the angel. But you know what? It's time that we begin to believe. You know, I, 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 it would be nice. I was talking this morning. Some schools, this nephew did a wonderful job about uh, the dream, about Joseph and, and dreaming. And, and, and God, God telling him it's okay to take Mary to be his wife because uh, she was going to have a baby, baby Jesus, you know, uh, uh, born, uh, born of Virgin Mary. And, 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 and the Holy Ghost uh, uh, conceived that inside, uh, it's in, in Mary. And so when we talk about that, I, I begin to think, you know, I, it'd be nice if people would start listening to God one more time like they did back in those days. Because if God tells it to you, God shows you in your spirit or in a dream or in your mindset, said, you know what, then it's right. God's not going to lead you down the wrong direction. God's not going to tell you uh, to go uh, to, to, to do something that's wrong. God's not going to tell you to do something that's negative. God's going to steer you in the right direction. But so many people, they're so used to, oh, they're so used to following their own GPS that they'll just follow the GPS even if they run off the cliff. I'm telling you this morning. I'm telling you this morning, God's got a plan. God's got a way. You know what? If we can't, if we can't get back to the nitty gritty and say, God, show me my way. Show me the path I need to take. If we quit getting settled in our ways and settled in things of this world, things would happen better for us. And we could be reaching a lot more people. We could reach those around. But what we have is we have a failure to communicate. We're not letting God communicate with us, but we're communicating with the world, telling them this and telling them that. And it's all right to do this. Let me tell you, I'm telling you this morning that God is looking for the people that will say, I won't change. I don't want the same thing to keep going on. I want to see a difference in my neighbors and in my community, Amen. in my family. I want to see a difference. Settled. The sons of law were settled. Settled in their way. They were settled. This was their home. Oh, hallelujah. This was their place. They weren't going nowhere. Bad news bears for them, huh? Bad news. Because when God tells you you're going somewhere or destruction's coming, if you don't go, destruction's coming. Amen. That's right. Amen. Destruction will destroy. Destruction. We've all seen videos and pictures. Maybe watch movies, documentaries of wars. Everyone's seen wars, right? Destruction. You know what destruction is? Destruction, how things are tore up. That's exactly what happens when people don't obey God and people don't listen to God and what God's saying. These people say, you know what? I don't, I don't want to be settled in queer in my ways. I just want to trust God. I want to believe God. Hallelujah. I want to be what he happened to be. Then we move on to life. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to try to put better on the sons of laws, but they, you know, I'm going to beat, I'm going to beat Lot up a little bit. You know what Lot was doing? He was lame. Did I read that? He was lame. And while he lame, the men laid hold upon his hand. Now you see, Lot knew God. Lot under, understood God. But Lot hated to leave. He would gotten so used to the place. He would gotten so used to everything just going on around. He didn't, he didn't participate. And the things that went on, but he just he just let people do what they wanted to do. He let people live like they wanted to live. He just minded his own business. It was his for and no more. Don't worry about a thing. He labored along. You see, they, they had to grab him and his wife by the hand, and daughter by the hand, and drag them out. You see, he, he was lingering in a place that God didn't want him to be. He was lingering in a place that God had sent someone to tell him, you got to get out. The land's going to be destroyed. And you know what? When God tells you something, and you believe it's going to happen, don't you do it? Don't, aren't you supposed to do it? You know, God told us his son, Jesus, was going to come back with a, with a trump. Hallelujah, going to come back with and the saints are going to rise up and be called away in the air. The dead which are, are, are dead as Christians are dead are going to rise first. And those which are alive may be called up together in the air are going to be with them. And so we understand that's going to happen. There's a lot of people that ain't living for the Lord in today's time. And why is that? Because they don't want change. They want to keep doing the same old thing. And that's exactly what was going through the mind of Lot. However, Abraham's prayer, listen to me, Abraham's prayer was stronger than Lot's desire. 
Because Abraham's prayer went to God, and God said, I'm going to save Lot for Abraham. His prayer went to God, and God said, I'm going to do it. Abraham, Lot might be lingering, but I'm going to have somebody lay hold on him and yank him out. Going to bring him out, maybe not of his own free will, going to force him out. You know what? Sometimes that might be what we got to do to our loved one. Say, so, you know what? Let me, let me just tell you what's fixing to happen. If, if, let me tell you how, how things are going to go bad for you if you don't accept Jesus or if you don't know Jesus or you don't turn to Jesus. Quit lingering with things in the world. No, the, not those that settle. Those that settle are going to keep doing the same old, same old. But I'm talking about those that's lingering and saying, well, well, I, I, I kind of, I kind of like this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this that I've been doing. I kind, I kind of like this. Now, I, 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 I'll leave that to the side, but I'll, I'll come to church, but I, I, I won't get involved. I'll come to church, but I still want to do this uh, worldly stuff on the side. I, I'll come. That's called lingering. That's called lingering, and that's exactly what Lot was doing. He was saying, "You know what? I've been told by God." That, that, that we got to get out because the structure's coming. But I just like the feel of this. This this house is so nice. Maybe it was a nice house with cathedral ceilings, and out in the front was a nice, beautiful fishing pond. Maybe in the back of his house was a nice wooded area where he had these big old monster bucks out there where he could go shoot anytime he wanted to. Just a nice cabin-looking feel that he just enjoyed. Maybe, maybe it was just a nice place. But, and so he was like, man, I sure hate to give up my home. I, I sure hate that this house is fixing to burn up. I, 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 let, me, let, me, let me just stay here just a little bit longer. And they had to come and grab him and take him out and place him outside the city. You see, that, that's where a lot of people are at in the church world. They go to church. They might even pray. They might even sing in the choir. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, they're lingering with a little bit of the world and try to have a little bit of God. A little bit of the world, have a little bit of God. A little bit of the world. Let me just over here just a minute. Kind of like this. Kind of like this. We wear our nice, women wear nice, their nice skirts and, and, and dress slacks and blouses on Sunday and the uh, guys wear their, wear their pants and they wear their button-up shirts and, and, and nice shirts and different things on Sunday. They just, they, they, you know, you, you, you find people dressed to a tee on Sunday or just, you know, dressed for, you know, spectacular for, for the Lord. Just, you just come out. But, but, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they go out and ain't got enough clothes on to take a shower. That's right. I'm talking about lingering now. I'm talking about lingering. That's, that, 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 that's what's going on in the church world. We've got people. Mm, mm, yep, Lord. People in the church world that are oh, we in church today, so we're going to sing good old gospel music. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. And then the rest of the week, stuff that will make you hit spin comes on those radios. Amen. And those yes. ears. Come on now. I'm, I'm in, I know it. I know it. I'm going to better just come more, and then I'll be doing better. Come more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come. You just. Or, yeah, we, we've got, we got church today on Sunday. We've got, we got to go to church. we go to church on Sunday. But the rest of the week, they're sitting up at the bar and the restaurants. Come on. I'm preaching the truth whether you like it or not. Right. We live in a time where people are trying to linger over here in the world and over here in the church called strata of the fence. Yes. Strata of the fence. A lot of people trying to do that. Let me help somebody this morning across this across these radio waves. No one will get to heaven strata of the fence. Amen. Amen. No one will get to heaven strata of the fence. They're either going to be in for God or they're going to be lingering in the world or settled in the world, whichever. They can't have it both ways. That's right. I remember when I was out in the world and I, I did my own things and I, 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 I lived like I wanted to and I was I thought I was, a, I, I was just a wild man doing, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Thought I had it figured out. I had nothing figured out but I was on my way to a devil's hell. And thanks be to God. Hallelujah. He gave me one more chance and saved my soul. December 31st, 1990, you've heard it many times, you'll hear it uh, many more times before I've my last breath. December 31st, 1997 was an awesome night in my life. It was a time when Jesus came in to my heart and saved my soul and changed me. And I said, you know what? 
I don't, and this, this is my thinking, my thoughts right now. I don't want to be settled in the world. I don't want to be laboring in the world. I just want to do what God, what you want me to do in my life. I want to be who you want me to be. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Have I made mistakes? Have I failed on God? Yes, I have. But I say, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me and help me to do right. Help me to do right. You know what that's called? That's called repentance. You see, not only do sinners have to repent, but a lot of times, and all the time, Christians need to repent for not doing something or either not saying something or not going, going somewhere or whatever. I'm not talking about you got to sin every day. I'm not talking about you willfully go out here and do all kinds of things that you know sin. I'm talking about sometimes we're supposed to tell somebody we meet about the Lord and we walk by and because we, because we twiddle our thumbs and we think, we ain't got time to stand and talk to them and we miss the time when God told us to speak to them, tell them about the church. You know what that is? That's a, that's a failure. And you know what that is? That's going to be sin if we don't make it right with the Lord. So we've got to make sure that we stay in tune with God. I'm talking about the grace. You say, I don't want to linger in this world. I might have to live in the world, but I'm not a part of the world. Hallelujah. I'm different. I want to be set apart. I want to be a different person. Hallelujah. The church needs to rise up and say, yes, we're going to be different. We're not leaving. Hanging out around the world. We're going to be what God wants us to be. He said lingering. lingering. Lingering occurs around the devil's crowd, the devil's places, and with the devil's ideas. If we're not careful, the devil will put all kinds of ideas in our head. Yes, he will. He's done that to me before. Well, devils say, well, they manage. So and so, you know, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't speak to you today. They manage. They don't like you. Devil will do that. You know what? I say God just handled. Devil get behind me, God handled. I can't make I, I can't make somebody like me. If I held a weapon to someone, I still can't make them like me. That's right. All I'm gonna do is just love on God and let God love on me. Hallelujah. I want people to like me and I hope people like me. But as, but if they don't, as long as God loves me and God likes me, I'm a okay. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking, I'm talking about we need to stay away from the settling and the lingering like, like Lot's family did. Then we look at Lot's wife. Oh, we're going to get down in the country with her. She, uh, uh, she was cold and in denial and looked back. We know what happened. She turned into a pillar of salt, didn't she? Turned into a pillar of salt because of her looking back. Uh, they was put out. As, as Lot was lingering and taking his time on getting out, they brought him out and set him outside. He said, hey, get to the mountain. And Lot said, oh, I can't make the mountain some evil to get me. Let me go to this land over here. Let me do, let's just go over here and we'll be safe. Everything will be all right. And, uh, and they were told, okay, you, you do that, but, no, but don't look back. Don't worry about going back. You just go look straight ahead. You move forward. You move forward. God's going to destroy this city. You don't worry about the city. You worry about where you're headed to. You look straight ahead and you keep forgetting. Hallelujah. But oh, Lot's wife, she said, oh, I, I, I like what I like what I had. I, I, you wouldn't let me, Lot, Lot, shame on you. You wouldn't let me settle over there. You wouldn't let me lay your name. You got me outside of the city that I love so much. Shame on you, Lot. When she turned around and looked, she turned into a pillar of salt because she was in denial and she was cold on what God was trying to do for her. God was trying to save her life and all she was worried about was what the world had to offer, what, what behind her had to offer, what yesterday had to offer, what last week had to offer, oh, hallelujah, what last week had to offer. She was worried about what happened yesterday instead of looking ahead at what God's fixing to do for us. God's saving our lives. God's sending us to a place and God's going to bless us. God's going to help us. God's going to minister in our life. God's going to help our, help us to be able to do good. She didn't look ahead. She didn't keep her eyes focused on the prize ahead of her. She didn't keep her eyes focused on where God was leading her to. She wanted to worry about where she had come from. And so she returned to the pillar of salt. She lost her life because she wanted what was behind her instead of what was ahead of her. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, grief and heartache behind me, but ahead of me is God's grace and mercy. Amen. Ahead of you is God's grace and mercy. Yes. Ahead of you is God's touch, God's blessing, God's miracle, what God wants you to have in your life. That's what's ahead of you. Don't look back into what yesterday was, what last week was, or what happened last year. Don't look back into the world, but look ahead. Goodness and the mercy of gracious God. Hallelujah. How he's going to bless your life. How he's going to touch you. Don't look back. Now, now, I'm not saying you don't use what God's 
brought you from to be a testimony. I'm not saying that by no means. Because we tell people how God's blessed us and helped us and saved us and brought us out of a, uh, on our way to a devil's hell and brought us on the way to heaven. I understand that. But I'm talking about we don't look back and desire the things that we used to do and desire the things we used to have and desire to be the people we used to. You see, I, 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 had, I had some, I thought, good friends when I got saved. Good old boys. But lo and behold, after they found I got out, I got saved. And when they called me, I invited them to church. And instead of go drinking with them like they wanted me to, guess what? They quit calling. Yeah. Those ones I thought was good friends turned out to be just acquaintances. On, yeah. Hallelujah. But I, when I got saved, I found my good friend. Okay. The best friend I've ever had. Yes. His name is Jesus. Amen. He's never left me nor forsaken me. He's been there with me through thick and thin, through all the problems I've had in my life. All the circumstances, all the situations that has arose. Amen. He's been right there beside me. Hallelujah. I've never been one of those ones like Lot to believe, to straddle the fence. Uh -huh. I've always been in any hobby I've, I've had or ever had, I got in full force. Now, I, I've told you before, I like to wheel and deal. I'm a horse trainer. I, I, I went full speed into something, and after maybe a month, maybe not even that long, maybe two or three months, I said, I don't like doing that. I'm going to do something else. I, whatever that was I got into, I'd sell it. I'd give it something else. I don't know. Maybe none of you would like that. But that's the way I've been. I, when I got into something, I would get in head over heels. And then, you know, and so when I got saved, I went in head over heels. And I'm not getting out anytime soon. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm not getting out at all. I'm going to end up going to heaven. Hallelujah. But when I got involved with God, I got head over heels in, 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 in there. And so, and so I'm not like my hobbies that I've had. I'm not going to trade God for anything. I'm going to keep God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God bless my life. Let God help my life. And let God show me the way, the right path that I need to go. So, so, so I've understood that, you know, we have to want something different. We have to want a change in our life. So you might be here this morning. You might be watching live stream this morning. Maybe you find yourself settling for what the world is saying. Maybe you found yourself settling for, or, or lingered in the world and things like that. Maybe you found yourself settling for what the news media says. Let me just help you this morning. Don't believe everything you hear on the news. Amen. Amen. I won't meddle any more of that. Just be careful at what you believe. Like, I, like I've been told before, the little old saying is this. Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. And that's, that's, that's kept me in pretty good shape for a lot of times. Because not everything you hear is the gospel. Not everything you hear in places called places of worship is the gospel. That's right. Got to get back to a place where we say, you know what? I'm not looking behind me, but I'm looking ahead. Amen. We have so much to gain. So much good in front of us, church. Those of you watching live stream, we've got so much ahead of us, so much good, so much good that we can go to, that can be a place that we can enjoy, a place that we can, could have everlasting life. Verse 28 said, and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, talking about Abraham, and toward all the land of the plain of the hill, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, verse 29, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham, sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities and the which Lot dwelt. God remembered Abraham. But Abraham got up early and he looked out there and he saw smoke as coming out of the furnace. I tell you, that activity, God sticks to his word. What he sees goes. Amen. What he says is real and true. If we think he's playing, read the Word of God. If we think it's a joke, read the Word of God. Amen. If we're contemplating settling in the things of the world or lingering around worldly stuff, check out the Word of God. If we're thinking about looking back, oh, it seems so easy when I used to do this. It seems so easy when I used to do that. We better think again. Let me help you this morning. The devil's jumped on my shoulder before. He hadn't let it because he knew he could get anywhere with me. But before, when we was first started out in uh, 
serving the Lord. Me and Sheila, when we first got saved, started serving the Lord, living for the Lord, and um, and, and we, we pay our tithes and, and offerings. And we, we had it rough there for a while. Sheila did not work at a postal service at that time. She was working a, 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 at a mill in Richfield and didn't make good money. Then she worked at a daycare that we really she didn't make good money. And, and so we had it rough, but we continued to pay. And the devil, he would, I, I'll never forget, he would jump on my shoulder and say, well, you can have more money, you can do this and that if you just quit giving all your money away, quit giving to the church, and quit paying and quit doing this. But I always, and I'm not, I'm not preaching no money. You do what's between you and the Lord. You do what, you do what God places in your heart. I, I told you before, I don't, I don't preach on unless God directly tells me. He hasn't yet. He may one day, but he hasn't yet. Because if anybody reads the Bible, they know what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do. I shouldn't have to pound you. That's right. But anyways, devil would jump on my shoulder and would tell me that. And, and still, I'd say, no, I might not have anything on this earth, but I'm not going to miss my mark. I'm going to keep giving to God because God has never failed me. And lo and behold, we always had food in the, as you can tell, food in the counter. We always had something to drive, and we always had a place to live. That's how good God is. So, so what I'm telling you is, there's no compromise with God. No compromising with the world. We've got to either be for God or we're against God. There's no halfway in between. There's no looking back thinking, oh yeah, it would have been easier. We would have had more goods, just more goodies and more this and more that uh, than we would think in our mind. But you see, you can't outgive God. Hallelujah. Yes. God's blessed yes. me more. Amen. Hallelujah. Than I can even tell you about. Hallelujah. And I'm not bragging on nothing except God. Hallelujah, there's nothing about me, nothing I can do, but God has blessed me more because of my faithfulness. And I'm not bragging, but I'm telling you, I've been faithful to God, and God's always been faithful to me. And you know what? Uh, as we look at our lives and we examine our lives, we need to understand how we've been faithful to God. I'm not talking about tithes and offering. I'm talking about in any way, every shape or form. Have we been faithful to God? Have we trusted God with all our heart? Have we believed in God with all our heart? Have we believed He'll do what He said He'll do? Have we lived for Him as best we can? Have we have we talked to Him on a daily basis? Have we read His Word on a daily basis? Have we said, God, I just want to be what you have me to be? Amen. It's up to you. You see, the choice is yours. You can settle wherever you're at. You can linger wherever you're at. And you can look back at whatever you want to look back at. I cannot control that. But I can tell you, that Jesus is the soon coming king. Yeah. And destruction is coming behind that. Yeah. So if we miss the mark, well, there's going to be destruction. And there's going to be a horrible time. So it's up to you. It's up to everyone watching. It's up to everyone in this whole world. The choice is theirs. People will always be a wonderful pastor told me that one time. Pastor Harry Hall. People will always be people. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. I've tried to change people and I can't do it. I've tried to, I've tried to uh, just get people to understand how what's supposed to happen. I can't do it. But I know one who can. Amen. God Amen. will get your attention. Yes, he will. He'll do it one way or, or the other. Right. God will get your attention. Amen. Somehow, some way. I'm glad he got my attention and I accept it. Amen. I, don't want, I don't want him to get my attention on that day of judgment. Yes. And he said, depart from me. I don't want his attention that way. I want him to say, well done. I want him smiling at me, letting me know. This morning, Sheila was taking a picture of the kids over here. Brent was just a smile. Had a big old smile on his face. Just made me so happy. You know, his pocket, he just made me so happy, that big smile. And I, I liken it like that. Don't you think when we smile and let the joy of God shine from us, that God's, happy, that God's not happy? He's smiling. I believe every day that he looks at us and we smile for his joy that comes out of our life. I believe he's happy. I believe he's smiling up there in heaven, looking upon us. Every time we get up, we say, praise the Lord, I believe he's smiling. Every time we sing a song in church, I believe he's smiling. Every time we, we, we get to pray and we get to talk, we get to read the Bible, get, and we're in church, we, we're preaching, he's smiling. He's saying, that's my children. That's my children. It's up to you. To be a part of the family or not, it's up to you. But God's going to have a remnant. God's going to have a people. You can settle in whatever the world has to offer. You can linger with the world and think you're going to make it, but you won't straddle the fence, make it to a place called heaven. Or you can look behind you and say, well, I used to have it so good back when I did this or did that. Let me tell you, if you didn't have 
God, it wasn't good at all. It just might have seemed good in your eyes or in somebody else's physical eyes. But if you didn't have God, it wasn't good at all. There's nothing good that comes out of flesh. It's all God. Amen. It's all God. If you'll stand with me this morning. Just read it with your cup please. Every head bowed and every eye closed, reverence to the Lord. I ask you this morning. I ask you this morning. This might be everybody raise their hand. It might be just some. How many in here? You, every head bowed and every eye closed, reverence to the Lord. You desire. You desire change. You just want to be exactly what God wants you to be. Just lift your hand up and right back down. Hallelujah. That should be everybody. Hallelujah. Just desire change in your life. You want to be every bit of what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Just like in all times, these altars are always open. They're always open. But all those who are those that watch the live stream, I'm sure many of you, many of you, you just want to be what God wants you to be. You don't want to settle for the world, you don't want to in the world, but you want to be what God would have you to be. I know you would raise your hand if you was here. But I ask you this morning. I ask you this morning. Somebody, somebody's come. It's all the road. You're welcome to come and pray. I'm going to pray with these. But all you're saying, all you're symbolizing, you pray at your seat, whatever you want to do. Ever how you want to pray this morning. Those at home, you pray right at your recliner, right there beside the bed, on the floor, wherever you want to pray. But all you got to do is say, Lord, Lord, I don't want to settle for the world. But I want to be all of you that I can be. I want to have all from you that I can have. I want to be that Christian you call on. I want to be 100%. 100% on your side. On your side. I want to change in my life. I want to be what you have to be. All you got to do is pray that. You can pray that as, as we're praying with these up here. You can pray that now. Pray and say, God, I just want to change in my life. I want to be what you want me to be. And he'll come in and talk to you. If there's any that's not saved, all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. When you feel that tug on your heart, say, please forgive me, God. Change my life. And he'll let his precious blood come down and minister in your heart and your life. Heavenly Father, I ask you to reach down and touch my brother and my sister. Lord, reach down and touch them in their life. Lord, help them see that change. Lord, you're working on the life of their precious saints. God, I ask you to be with them, help them, lead them, God. Lord, do the mighty Lord. Let's hold this fire. Lord, shine forth in their life. Lord, help them never be silent in the world. Lord, you're looking for the world. Lord, help them to continue to the let you work in their life. Continue to grow them, go, help them to go, and glow for your glory. And say, Lord, help them to continue to be that blessing. You cause them to be. Lord, help them to see that change in their life. Be what you got to be. Lord, I ask you to touch my prayer. You finish my life. Finish in the heart of your home. Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, reach out and touch my sister. Lord, she's a precious saint. Lord, I ask you to give desire of her heart. Lord, reach down and bless her in a mighty way. Lord, help her with that message you call her with. Lord, just reach down. Lord, she's determined to serve you and do your will. Help her to never settle for anything in the world or living for anything in the world. Lord, help her to be what you have to be. Help her to be that message you call her with. Lord, just reach down and bless her today, God. Give her desire of that heart. Lord, reach down and bless her. Help her, to, help her to know that she wants that change. Lord, she wants to be the very best she can for you and do your will, God. Continue to strengthen her, bless her, and minister her life. Lord, touch her in life. Reach down and do the work, God. I believe in you and I trust you. And I thank you for this. Hallelujah. 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 So we pray in the final prayer. If you haven't prayed yet, all you got to do is say, Lord, I want to change in my life. Lord, I want to be better for you. I want to do more for you. I want to be a, a willing vessel that you can call upon. I want to do your will. I don't want to settle. I don't want to linger. And I don't want to look back. But God, I want to look straight ahead to your coming. I want to look straight ahead to what you have for me. I want to look straight ahead to heaven. Lord, I want to do your will. Just pray that today. Heavenly Father, we come before you throne today. Love you and praise you. Thank you one more time for allowing us to be in your house to serve you, to honor you, to make by your name. Thank you for allowing us to do your will, God. You've moved in our lives so many times. You've done a mighty work. I thank you for this message, God. It's encouraged me. It's encouraged us all. God, I ask you to reach down everybody listening. If there's anyone that's not saved, not, not living for you, Lord, I ask you to please break your heart. If you break your heart and they're coming to you and ask forgiveness, please save them. Please change your life. Help them do right. Lord, everybody else, Lord, that's on fire, they've been serving you a long time, no matter how long but they've been serving you or how, uh, how short a time they've been serving you, Lord, they, Lord, help them to not linger. Help them to not look back and help them to not settle for the world, but God, help them to look straight ahead. Help them to continue to want more of you, God, all of you, God, in their life. Help them to be what you have to be. Help them to read your word. Help them to pray. Help them to be at church. Lord, help them to do your will. All the ones who 
ready for the world. But God, be ready for your soon coming. Lord, help us all look ahead. Help us all be prepared. Help us all have change in our life. Then we'll look ahead and we'll step forward, move forward for your glory, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, just reach down and have your way in our life. Knowing you're going to do your will. Touch everybody that's not here today for whatever reason. Let your power and your mercy shine for their life. Keep everybody safe. Watch over them. Lord, help us to go for them. Do your will. Touch all those who are sick and afflicted. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all things are done in your holy name. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank each and every one of you for coming today. Make sure you smile at each one. Fist bump if you want to. Don't forget tonight's service at 6. Worship the Lord. Honor the Lord. Remember, Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.